Hello and welcome to my new video about the geometric series, okay? What is the geometric series? The geometric series, I will first look at the finite geometric series and then we will go to another, and I will just call it with GN, okay? Like G unit, okay, GN unit, okay? What this is looking like, it's looking like this, x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4, and it goes on to x to the n. And actually you want to evaluate the sum, but you see it's pretty long, and one could actually calculate it there, but we are lazy mathematicians, and all mathematicians are lazy, so you should be lazy too. What we are doing is we are multiplying this equation by x, and you will get this. So uh, 1 times x will give you x, x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4, and it will just continue onwards and we get x plus 1. Okay, now you see this, and I open your eyes, you see, wow, here's a sum, and actually here comes to, here's somewhere x, and you see that this is also in here. The only part that is different here is the 1 and here is this. If I took the difference out of this and I will do this, I'm very, very nasty this day. I'm doing this. We just um, subtract this minus. So these are going away. We get 1 minus only this. Okay? This looks really nice. What could one do is just divide with 1 minus x. I'm just dividing this and I'm getting the geometric series is equal to that. Now, very, very important thing here in, when dividing with 1 minus x, I was not allowed to have x equals 1. Okay, this is not allowed. For x equals 1, the geometric series is actually not geometric anymore. It's just looking like this, m plus 1. If you look at this, we have 1, 1, 1, so if you would have for x equals 1, then we would have n times 1 plus 1, and then we have n plus 1. So this is what we evaluated. Now, we won't stop on that. We will do a little, little thing to that, okay? I will just write it down. What one can do. So we found out that gn, the geometric series, if we take this, actually this was like written like this, x squared plus x to the n. What we found out, okay, this is a very, very cool thing, that this gangster was equal to this or this. Wow, this is handy. One could calculate this very, very easy, while well, this is very, very unhandy. Now, what can we do further? Okay, you could stop here and say, wow, I'm happy, I'm getting back. I have to check my Facebook side and see if I have some news. But we are not like this. We are continuing our way. And we are looking at this and saying, actually, this is cool. But what will happen if I'm looking for, I will, n goes to infinity. So n goes to infinity. What will happen then? Then this will be looking like this x and apply to infinity. Now one could ask, well, well, can I calculate it somehow easily, easily? And the other formula would suggest you to write this. Okay, I'm just writing this symbolly, but you will understand the concept. And what we have here, actually if I take infinite and add one, this doesn't matter, I still have x to the infinite. Okay, but if you look at this, this has to be limited in some way. For example, if I took 2, okay, if I took 2, then we had 2 to infinity. This would be an infinitely large number. This would not help us. But the, the only case when this thing is converging is when the absolute value of x is smaller than 1. What will happen then? For example, let's take 1 half. If you take 1 half and multiply, what 1 half to the infinity means is take 1 half and multiply it with itself. It's 1 half times 1 half will give you 1 over 4. Again, multiply with 1 half will give you 1 over 8, 1 over 6, 1 over blah, 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 blah. And you can continue on and you will get smaller and smaller numbers and actually you will end up having this. This 
is a very interesting thing. What we have written down here is 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus all this stuff and going to infinity but only for x smaller one now you might think uh, what the hell why could this be important naturally these kind of things are called power sums and they are very very important in mathematics and also very very important in physics and if you want to work on that you have to know the concepts of that and what this is actually giving you is you have the power to approximate this function by using these parts Okay, you will not understand it actually now why this is important. Maybe I will do a video and show you how the classical Newtonian physics will convert or actually will come out of Einstein's equation by using these power sums. But before starting off with that, we have to just have a groundwork on that, okay? So guys, that concludes the lecture. In the next video, I will talk about Taylor expansions, okay? See you guys.